How is it going everybody? Thank each and every single one of you for coming. I'm so glad each and every one of you can make it. Today's video is going to be about what the what one of my wonderful subscribers sent me. They started the process of figuring out what's going on with the speakers in my 1993 Z28 Camaro. So let's get to it. on was I, I'm getting out of one speaker on the passenger side I'm getting a staticky sound. Hear it. Out of the speaker on my left, the driver's side, I used to get a little bit of static just ever so slightly but now it cuts in and out. And now, this speaker's not even working. All I'm getting is a little bit of static. And in my rear speaker, the factory subwoofer, I'm actually getting a, a popping or a clicking sound in it. As you can see, they look like brand freaking new, right? Mine happens to be the Bose factory sound system, and I think later on they switched over to the Monsoon. And the Bose system has individual amplifiers for each speaker it's a low wattage system i think it's two watts i mean two ohms i forgot the actual watts hey cooper he loves paper here gonna be in the video today but anyhow it's it's a low two ohms or two watts i forgot which two ohms system so you don't want to just hook it up to your factory to any radio and throw the power to it because instantly you're going to blow it. Yeah, it might work for a second or two, but it's going to blow it. It's too much power. So they have their own setup, their own system, and I, I love the way they sound. No other speaker sounds like a Bose system. And there is a way to test these. And why am I mentioning testing them? Well, there's two issues that my car could be having. Two issues that it could be having. Well, really, there's more than that. But as far as the speakers are concerned, there's two issues I could be having. I could be having a, a voice coil going bad in it, right? Or the amplifier itself could be going bad because I'm, I, I pulled off the covers and you can look and see that the speakers are not busted, but the voice coil, which is actually in there, could be bad. It's just a winding, you know, the electrical impulse goes through it and the way we talk and everything, it creates a different pulse, different signal, and that's what creates the sounds coming out short terminology or short description it's much more complicated than that but you get the gist but there's two ways you can test it one is by using a digital well you can use a regular battery operated ohm meter right or a 9 volt battery i'm not going to be using the 9 volt battery method but i'll show you how to do it and all you do on these particular Bose systems they have the terminals one on each side but on a regular one, they're right there together. So all you do is take the 9-volt battery. It doesn't matter which way you have it oriented or polarity-wise. And you just touch the two terminals together. And what it will do, if the voice call is still good, it will actually pop. It will make a pop, pop, pop sound. And the speaker will either go in or out. Depending on you know which way you have the battery oriented and everything. But you just stick it on there and it will pop. And you can physically see the speaker pop in and out. And you can physically feel it. So, the other way, like I said, is with the digital ohm meter. So by now, you're probably wondering, why am I checking something that somebody sent me? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first one is, of course, to make this video to show you, the viewer, the subscriber, or anybody looking to find out about this knowledge, how to do it. And number two, I don't know how long these have been sitting. I don't know if they were actually working when the guy took them out. He, he said they was. And I definitely, definitely am giving him benefit of the doubt. But still, before you just take the car apart, because, you know, this isn't as simple as removing the grill on the car and, you know, out of the door panel, taking a few screws out and then putting the speaker in. These speakers are much more involved than that because I have to remove the, 
the, uh, the lock mechanism, I have to remove the door panel and then I can take it out. And then the, there's a bracket in there where the speaker and the amplifier are, are mounted. So it's basically an all-in-one system. So I don't want to take it, go through all that trouble to take it apart and then put these in, put it back together and be installing something that's bad. So it's, it's kind of like the old woodworker's rule, measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to check the speakers and then we will go from there once we get out to the car. If I feel the, when I take the speakers out, I can check the voice coils. If the voice coils are bad on those speakers, I can swap the speakers out. Or if for some reason the voice coils and everything check out on the other speakers, I can swap out the amps. Or I can just say, screw it, I've got everything, let's just go ahead and swap everything and be done with it. So, you know, there's many options whenever you go into something like this. But here we go. Set this right in the middle so hopefully you can see it. All right, move this one out of the way so you can see the numbers. This is an auto ranging, right, which means it puts the decimal point in the correct place. And if you touch it together, you can see that it's, it's working, right? That's how you read ohms. Or you can read continuity. Right? We're not looking for continuity. We're looking for ohms. Not microfarads. There we go. We're looking for resistance. Each speaker has its own uh, resistance range. Typically, your car speakers are going to be 4 ohms. Your house speakers are going to be 8 ohms. Typically. Not always, but typically. That's the way it works. When you get up into your higher range, more powerful stuff that requires bigger cables and all that stuff, like your heavy duty, hard hitting subwoofers or your really expensive car speakers, then you can get up into the six and the eight ohm range. But typically, typically, your car speakers are gonna be a four ohms. Like I said, these being a Bose, they're two. So what we're looking for on a, on a two ohm system is somewhere one ohm or greater. And with a, a four ohm system you're looking for two ohms or greater or with house speakers you're looking for eight ohms which means you're looking for five ohms or better so let's see what we have and polarity does not matter you can touch either or right try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see and i've got 1.3 1.2 somewhere around 1.3 so these are good that's showing that this speaker is good as far as the ohm ring. So let's push it over to the side and bring in the other one. Now to tell if it's a bad speaker, it will show zero, which is an infinity reading or an infinite reading, which is signifying a short, or it'll be just some crazy astronomical number outside of the range. Like I said, these being two ohms, if, they, if, they, if it was bad, it could show five ohms and up, or all zeros. So let's see what this one says or reads. And this one is also 1.2, 1.3. So these are definitely within the specifications. But that's all you that's that's all you have to do to check that part. But there you go, there's part one. We have checked the the new speakers that I have gotten. Uh, we've got those checked, so we now know that the voice calls are be, are good. So we can now move on to the next step, which is taking the speakers out of the car. With that said, we'll see you in the next video. I thank each and every one of you for stopping by. Maybe this will help, you know, if you figure out if you got a home stereo, all the speakers work the same. All you gotta do is figure out what ohm range it is. Enjoy your day. Thank you for stopping by. Enjoy your cars, because even though I'm stuck inside, I'm enjoying showing you how to do this. And I'm actually enjoying doing it myself. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for stopping by.